visual direction it is a two dimensional localization of an object and it is represented by a straight line which connects any given point on the retina to points in the physical space in the diagram you can see the fovea represented by the point f the nodal point represented by the point n the object p the object o the object q the line of sight from object o joins the fovea at the point f while passing through the nodal point n the line of sight from object p joins the retinal point below the fovea at point a while passing through the nodal point n the line of sight from object q joins the retinal point above the fovea at point b while passing through the nodal point n here the lines of sight f and o a and p and b and q all are visual directions Second, principal visual direction of visual axis is the visual direction of an object that can be represented by a line that joins the fovea and the object of regard. It is the imaginary line that connects the point of fixation O while passing through the nodal point N and meets the fovea at the point F. Here in the diagram you can see the fovea represented by the point F, the nodal point represented by the point N and the object of regard represented by the point O. The line of sight which joins the fovea and the object of regard while passing through the nodal point is the principal visual direction. So, here F and O is the principal visual direction. Third, oculocentric visual direction. When the eye fixes an object through principal visual direction, the other objects around the fixation point focus around the fovea. Those visual directions are called oculocentric visual direction. Therefore, each point of the retina can be considered to have its own sense of direction. Here in the diagram, you can see the fovea represented by the point F, the fixation point represented by the point O, the nodal point represented by the point N. The line of sight joining the fovea and the fixation point while passing through the nodal point is the principal visual direction. The point above the fixation point is represented by the point P. The point below the fixation point is represented by the point Q. The line of sight from point P passes through the nodal point to come to a focus below the fovea at point A. The line of sight from point Q passes through the nodal point to come to a focus above fovea at point B. Here, the lines of sight A and P and B and Q both are oculocentric visual direction. Fourth, egocentric visual direction. Egocentric visual direction refers to the direction of an object in space relative to oneself that is observer's head rather than the eyes. Egocentric direction allows us to determine if a change in the retinal position is due to object movement or due to head movement. In the figure A, a stationary object is imaged on the fovea with the head and the body stationary. Here in the figure, you can see that the eye is stationary and the image of a stationary object is focused on the retina. When the eye moves, the stationary object is then imaged on a new retinal position. Now in the figure, you can see that the eye has moved to a new position and the image of the stationary object is now focused on a new retinal position. Therefore, oculocentric direction has changed but egocentric direction has not changed as the object has remained stationary. In the figure, you can see that the egocentric direction of the object remains the same but the oculocentric direction has changed. In the figure B, the eye tracks a moving object. Here in the figure, you can see the image of the moving object focused on the retina at point F. As the eye is moving along with the object, image is falling on the fovea at all times. Here in the figure, you can see the eye moving with the object. So the image of the moving object is focused on the fovea at all times. Thus the oculocentric direction is the same, but the egocentric direction is changing. So, the oculocentric direction of the moving object is same and the egocentric direction is changing as seen in the figure. Corresponding retinal points versus non-corresponding retinal points Corresponding retinal points Retinal elements of the two eyes that share a common subjective visual direction are called corresponding retinal points. In the diagram alongside, you can see that fovea of the left eye and the fovea of the right eye are being stimulated simultaneously by the common fixation point straight ahead. Another point N stimulates the corresponding nasal retinal point A in the right eye and the temporal retinal point P in the left eye respectively. They have a common visual direction. 
So, for the fixation point N, nasal retinal point A in the right eye corresponds to the temporal retinal point P in the left eye. They have common visual direction directed rightward. It does not matter whether a stimulus reaches the retinal element in one eye alone or its corresponding partner in the other eye alone or whether it reaches both simultaneously. Nasal side of one retina corresponds to temporal side of other retina and vice versa. Retinal point 5 degrees temporal to fovea in right eye corresponds to retinal point 5 degrees nasal to fovea in the left eye. In the diagram below, along with the fovea of the left eye and the fovea of the right eye, the nasal retinal points A, B and C in the right eye correspond to the temporal retinal points P. Q and R in the left eye. Non-corresponding retinal points. All other retinal elements are non-corresponding or disparate retinal points. In the diagram alongside, you can see that fovea of both eyes are stimulated by a common fixation point straight ahead. Another point A stimulates nasal points AL and AR in the left and the right eyes respectively. These points being non-corresponding points have different visual directions that cross beyond the fixation point and so the object appears to be further away. Another point B stimulates temporal retinal points BL and BR in the left and right eyes respectively. These points are non-corresponding points and so the object appears to be closer than the fixation point. So, when the objects stimulate non-corresponding points, this gives rise to different visual directions and leads to physiological diplopia. Therefore, corresponding points have the same principal visual direction and non-corresponding points have different visual directions. In the figure above, point A and point B stimulates disparate points or non-corresponding retinal points. Cyclopean Eye Introduction we see with two eyes but we don't see the object double, so binocular vision can be represented by a single eye. The cyclopean eye is an imaginary eye situated midway between the two eyes. Here alongside, in the diagram, you can see the cyclopean eye. Using the cyclopean eye, crossed and uncrossed diplopia or disparity can be explored. The principle of cyclopean eye can be applied to patients with strabismus, that is those who have misalignment of eyes. Patients with strabismus are usually classified according to the direction of the eye turn. Two common types of strabismus are patients with an esotropia with their eyes turned in and patients with exotropia their eyes turned out. Patients with an exotropia will have cross diplopia while patients with an esotropia will have uncross diplopia. Among the two diagrams alongside, in the first diagram you can see the esotropic eye where the image of the target is seen on the same side as that of the misaligned eye that is the right eye target is seen on the right side. This is called uncross diplopia. In the second diagram you can see the exotropic eye where the image of the target is seen on the other side as compared to the misaligned eye that is the right eye target is seen on the left side this is called cross diplopia for an object closer than the fixation point cross diplopia occurs as the image of the object falls on temporal retina of both eyes in the diagram alongside you can see that the object focused is closer than the fixation point and so we get cross diplopia. This is termed cross diplopia because the image in the left eye is seen on the right side and vice versa. Uncross diplopia. For an object located further than the fixation point, the image of the object falls on the nasal retina of both eyes producing uncross diplopia. In the diagram alongside, you can see that the object is found to be further away than the fixation point, thus giving rise to uncrossed diplopia. This is termed uncrossed diplopia because the image in the left eye is seen on the left side. Horopter versus Panem's fusional area. The horopter. 
Horopter is the locus of points in space that stimulates corresponding points. Here in the adjoining figure you can see multiple points stimulating corresponding retinal areas of both eyes. It is a multitude of points in visual space that lead to single vision. Our visual world comprises of multiple points hence the need to develop concepts to deal with the whole visual space. This concept is called the horopter. The Wittmuller circle. The Wittmuller circle is a theoretical horopter. All points on this circle should stimulate corresponding points on the retina and lead to single vision provided that the fixation point lies on the center of the circle and the eyes rotate about its nodal point instead of their center of rotation. Here in the adjoining figure you can see the fixation point lying exactly at the center of the Wittmuller circle while stimulating the fovea of both eyes and thus forming the angle A1. Another point lying on the circle stimulates corresponding retinal points in both eyes while forming angle A2. Thus the angle A1 is found to correlate perfectly with angle A2. The Wittmuller circle assumes there is angular symmetry of corresponding points. The Empirical Horopter The herring hellebrand deviation describes the mismatch between the theoretical and empirical horopter. They showed with Muller circle does not describe the longitudinal horopter. The empirical horopter is flatter than the theoretical horopter. The distribution of the corresponding retinal elements are not the same in the nasal and temporal parts of retinas. The discrepancy or the difference between the theoretical horopter and the empirical horopter can be attributed to disturbing optical properties of the ocular media. At some given distance, which is called the abathic distance, the empirical horopter becomes a straight line, thus matching the apparent frontoparallel plane. Finally, for fixation distances further than the abathic distance, the empirical horopter is a convex parabola. In the figure adjoining, you can see the rays of light being focused on the Wittmuller circle as well as the empirical horizontal horopter thus giving rise to relative disparity and absolute disparity. Panam's Fusional Area Panam's Fusional Area is a concept that allows for single binocular vision about the point of fixation even when the corresponding retinal points are not being stimulated. An image of the retina of one eye can be fused and seen as single with similar image on the retina of the other eye even though disparity in the retinal image exists. Panam's fusional area is needed for stereopsis. If images do not fall in the Panam's area, then diplopia results and so Panam's fusional area defines the zone of stereo vision. Size of Panam's fusional area increases with retinal eccentricity. At fovea, it is 6 to 10 minutes of an arc and at 120 degrees of eccentricity, it is 30 to 40 minutes of an arc. In the adjoining figure, you can see the fixation point lying at the center of the horopter stimulating the fovea of both the eyes. The image of an object lying on the horopter is seen as single. However, the image of the objects lying closer than the horopter or further away from the horopter but lying in the Panam's fusional space is also seen as single.